See the fire in your eyes. See the fire in your eyes. See the fire in your Hey, see the fire in your eyes. Hey, what's up guys? Lil Karibo here, singing a song that I'm likely to start crying to if I keep going. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to the Island of Academy. Academy Island, you might call it, if you're a commoner. But if you are a proper posh git, like the antagonist of today's episode and every episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, really, uh, then you would call it, uh, the other thing that I said. But yeah, welcome back to, uh, Little Karibo Watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, a series that has been on a, uh, way too long hiatus, unfortunately. I, I had some troubles in real life. I know this is where I usually make up a story about how I was put in detention by Crowler for, I don't know, stuffing his deck full of cheese. That's what I would say if I were to make up a story, but the truth is, I've just had a bit of a sh time. One of the things that I ran into was that uh, YouTube demonetized my channel uh, for a, uh, a temporary amount of time. It's, it's still an ongoing issue, but it's getting resolved as far as I can see. I'll uh, keep you updated on that as I go. I'm, I'm in a bit of uh, trouble <laughs> financially, but we'll figure it out. Either way, I'm here having my card game education. It's my card game academia. I can summon the most powerful monsters, but I gotta break my fingers first before I draw the cards. That's my quirk. But yeah, if you don't know or you don't remember, this is the show where I sit on my ass and I watch Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. The first of many spin-offs to the popular card game-based teenager adventure show, Yu-Gi-Oh! And man, did it change the world. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, like that, that was the spin-off that, that really set the bar for spin-offs, as far as I'm concerned. And when I say set the bar, I mean it made people go, bah, that was terrible. Let's not do that again. Ah, I'm a cheeky monkey. I'm full of nonsense. I presume that's why you're here, to hear more of my nonsense. But yeah, this is the show where I watch an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and then I come on here, and I look at the camera, and I pretend that I'm talking to a human being, and I recount my experiences. And your role is equally important, because you have to sit there and pretend I'm funny. So yeah, there's a lot of pretending going on in this show. Thanks for participating, or pretending to participate. And if you want to follow along with me, you can watch the episodes at Hulu.com, Yu-Gi-Oh!.com, on DVD, digitally, I think that goes along with everything else I said, but yeah, there are plenty of ways to support Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and Yu-Gi-Oh! officially. So do that, and then come here and see what I had to say about it unofficially. So yeah, without further ado, let's get back to episode 22 of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which is entitled The Duel Off Part 2. And as you'll recall, Bastion and Jaden are having a duel off, very different from a duel, who knows how, but it is, to decide who gets to represent Duel Academy in the school duel. The duel of the school. Riding a mule, looking a fool in the pool. School duel, Jaden's a tool. And in the climactic moments of the anti-climactic previous episode, we saw Bastion Misawa activate his trap card, Cursed Seal of the Forbidden Spell, which prevents Jaden from using his spell card polymerization, preventing him also from using any fusion summons whatsoever. But it's actually bollocks, because he can fuse many other ways, but... Let's not go into that. It's only a card game school about card games where everyone should know this stuff. Can't expect them to know everything about card games at the Card Game University where people learn about card games. No fusions, but that's how Jaden wins all his duels. Wait, Jaden can't use fusions, but that's how he fusion summons all his fusion monsters that he fuses fusion. How is he gonna fuse if he can't fuse the fusion fuse? Fusion fusion! How's he gonna fuse the fuse if he don't have the fuse to fuse it? Uh, fuse. I'm con fused. How he gonna do it? Well, let's find out how he gonna do it. Speaking of things to do it to, the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX English opening theme. I myself lost my virginity to the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX opening theme. Yeah, I got my game on while getting my on. I actually didn't do that, but I think it is a good idea. If you want to get your partner in the mood, stick on that Yu-Gi-Oh! GX theme song. They'll be gagging for it. Oh, just chilling out with the crew in the schoolyard gets me so horny. <laughs> Back at class, they didn't teach us this. Yu-Gi-Oh! G sex! <laughs> I amuse myself. Back to the action, and we see that the news reporter Gerard is still hard at work in the library trying to access confidential information that is easily accessed 
from the library. And he's working at the biggest f***ing computer monitor I've ever seen. You get eye strain from spending five seconds in front of that thing. It's the most advanced library computer of all time. Yes, you can view the entire Dewey Decimal System in glorious 4K. Gerard is desperately trying to access the student's information, and somehow he guesses the password correctly. I'm in Gerard is greeted by all kinds of information on the students from Ra Yellow, Obelisk Blue, and Sly for Shit. And while he's perusing through the students' information, he sees an image of Alexis's brother, Atticus Rhodes, who is a big, dreamy, anime, mullet-having, big, dreamy, anime, baby, babe boy. Gerard notes that it says that Atticus is studying abroad on sabbatical. And as he keeps going through the student database, he notices that they're all f***ing missing. I'm not exaggerating, like he comes across like a dozen within a few minutes. And this one's gone too. And so's this one. And him. And her. But there's no forwarding address. Oh yeah, that's the issue. No forwarding address. Oh, they're missing? That's a shame. How are we gonna send them any postcards? I'm sorry, but for Shadow Realm Lane, Shadow Realm Town is not a valid address. Gerard uses his expert reporter skills to figure out that these must be the missing students he heard about. Oh, the, the missing students are the missing students that... How did you put that together, Gerard? the Jack Reacher of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Gerard is very excited, as anyone would be who thought that there was a chance that Jaden was going to be abducted at some point, but he's more excited about the fact that when he breaks the story, he's going to get a massive pay break. And then Gerard does his best impression of Electronic Arts when they release another third-party game. And good luck surviving all the bad publicity. <laughs> Back at the Duel Arena, and that proper posh tosh Bastion Misawa, the blah bra from Ra, is mocking Jaden for not being able to fuse anymore. You know, if Jaden were a crystal gem, that would mean he was impotent. In the crowd, Chumley reassures everybody that Jaden still has more life points than Bastion. And if we've been paying attention this entire time to Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, we would know that life points mean everything. That's been a consistent lesson. There's never been anything to suggest otherwise. Chomley is smart. Zane says maybe they underestimated Bastion. He's playing this like a pro. Yeah, nothing quite says pro duelist quite like getting rid of the ability to use spell cards and pretending that prevents fusion summons. I activate Swords of Revealing Light so your monsters can't attack. Wow, what a pro! Alexis and Zane argue over Jaden's chances. After all, with just one card, he's all but disarmed Jaden's deck. Come on. He's just taken away Jaden's ability to use fusion monsters, that's all. Yeah, it's not like Bastion took away his ability to use... Normal monster cards, ritual monster cards, effect monster cards, trap cards, and spell cards. Yeah, okay. Normal traps, counter traps, and continuous traps. Okay. In the audience, Professor Banner holds up Pharaoh the cat and says this does not look good. Rawr! Speak for yourself, bitch. I'm the hottest cat on this island. Only cat on this island, really. That makes me king of cats. Bra bra. Chancellor Shepard is sat there all bald-like and with a beard. Cue lots of comments about how I look like Chancellor Shepard because everyone who's bald and has a beard looks identical. Yep, 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 yep. It's not true! Jaden switches Sparkman to defense mode. So Sparkman kneels down next to AV uh, uh, in defense mode. Jesus. Bastion Ooh. condescends to Jaden. Not much to do when you've been stripped of the ability to use your favorite monsters, eh, Jaden? There's actually plenty to do, such as staring at Avion's beautiful ass. Among other things blanking on it right now. Jaden does his best impression of Dutch from Red Dead Redemption 2 if four kids got to him. There's loads to do, like finding a new plan. It'll be tough, but I'm up for it. Bastion draws and gets some sort of Harry Potter character. I don't know who that one is, but I'm sure at some point JK Rowling is gonna tell me how big his knob is. Turns out this card is called the Mathematician. Ha! <laughs> the Mathematician. What an archaic, fantastical concept. Glad we evolved beyond the need for those, and all of our teachers just teach card games now. That's Bastion's dad, by the way. Bastion poshly explains that when the Mathematician is summoned, you have to send one of your cards to the graveyard. However, when the math guy is killed, 
he gets to add one card from his deck to his hand. And then we get this random shot of Bastion's dual disc, like we're expecting something to happen. I can take a card from my deck and add it to my hand. What was that? Just look at his dual disc, just check it out. Just in case you forgot that that's where the cards came from. Just in case the concept of dual discs is entirely lost on you, you weirdo. Seriously, that shot told us f***ing nothing except for the fact that Bastion will expect to see a card come out of there at some point. Fascinating stuff. Glad we had it in the episode. Bastion dramatically announces... Of course, none of that is very pressing right this moment. Oh, so none of that really matters right now. Why did you have to announce that so dramatically? None of this matters, but it's very important. Water Dragon attacks Speak Me. And Jaden gets caught in the Splash Zone. I'd like to be in Elemental Hero Avion's Splash Zone. Bastion and then commands the mathematician to attack Elemental Hero Avion. The only math that matters to me right now is one butt cheek plus one butt cheek equals damn. And the mathematician uses his magical spell wand that mathematicians have to cast a beam of pink magical numbers at Avion. The overwhelming force of formulas and sums destroys Avion's perfect ass in an explosion of equations. And speaking of asses, we then see Gerard over here walking the halls of Duel Academy, chuntering to himself. And he's saying to himself that he's gonna sell the missing student story for a, a massive amount of money and ruin the school's reputation. So yeah, no loss really. Like, who is losing out if Gerard actually manages to do this? Like, the missing students would probably get found much quicker, and I feel like that's the priority. Not the card game based education of a bunch of numpties. Gerard flashes back to his in-depth relationship with Jade and Yuki. Hey, it's cool. Skyscraper. You like that card too? That kid. Why can't I just forget about him? Yes, the two conversations that you've had with Jaden are really going to be enough to shake you to your journalistic core and make you question yourself. After hearing Jaden's voice in his head, Gerard then hears what sounds like a stadium full of people cheering. So he goes into the duel arena and he sees Jaden and Bastion dueling in front of maybe a few dozen people. Maybe all the missing students are cheering for him as well and that's why you can't see him. And the duel arena was maybe five feet away from where he was standing, so hearing all of that as an enormous crowd is kind of weird. I don't know, maybe the duel academy staff like to pipe crowd noise into the duel arena so that these students will know what it's like to have thousands of people cheering them on. Because, you know, people like Jaden are never going to have that experience in their lives. So, it's a nice little gesture. In it. Gerard checks out the duel and is like, oh look, it's that big duel that was supposed to be such a big deal. I don't care about card games. Mm. But then of course he gets transfixed by the inspirational performance of Jade and Yuki in this fairly trivial qualification duel for some other event. But no, massively life-changing for Gerard over here. Bastion ends his turn and Jaden says his duel is just getting started. You see, we're different. Oh, no sh**, dude. Jaden Yuki, the guy who likes to pop his collar and be like, hey, that's sweet, is different from the guy who writes equations on the ceiling and eats lobster for breakfast. I mean, I would never have guessed. Chumley compares himself to Jaden. I don't know if that's an upgrade. Yeah, Jaden plays with his gut. Ew. Stop playing with your gut, Jaden. What's wrong with you? Jaden summons elemental hero Bubble Man in attack mode, who is clearly in the midst of the greatest orgasm of his life. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's listening to that Yu-Gi-Oh! GX theme. It'll get you randy. You know, if you were to design a dildo based on an elemental hero, I think Bubble Man. Yeah, gets my vote. And it would double as a bubble blower. You know, in case you want to play with your pets afterwards. I think of everything. Jaden explains with an intense face, but a surprisingly calm voice, his strategy. Now when I summon Bubble Man, if I have no other cards out, that's a good thing. Yeah, Jaden, that sounds good. I can't wait. 
Turns out it allows Jaden to draw two cards, and one of them is the equip spell card Bubble Blaster, which is a bazooka fed by a water tank. I wouldn't want to hang around that water cooler at work. Sure, there'd be great gossip, but there'd also be the potential to be taken out by some sort of ordinance. It's not really worth hearing about Doug's new piece on the side if you're also concerned about ballistic missiles. Bubble Man fires his bubbly bazooka at the mathematician who promptly disappears in a puff of improper fractions. Should really have called him the mathematician if you ask me. Missed opportunity. He has spells and sh**. Jaden throws down a couple of face downs and then activates his spell card, Mirage of Nightmare. Jaden explains that he's spicing things up a little bit. It's not about the fuse in Bastion, it's about the monster, and mine are still raring to go! Yeah, baby. It's not about the motion in the ocean. It's about whether or not you can summon legendary fishermen so he gets a field spell bonus from it so he can destroy all your opponent's monsters. That's sex. Bastion is incensed, and he demands to know when Jaden is going to accept that dueling is just a numbers game. Probably when Jaden is able to understand what numbers are. During Bastion's standby phase, Jaden uses Mirage of Nightmare's effect so that he can restore his life points and gain a bunch of new cards. And everyone is blown away that Jaden did something that was not just using polymerization. They treat it like he just mastered fusion energy, and not just avoided fusing monsters. Gerard is very impressed by Jaden's dueling, but is also deep undercover already for his next job, where he's pretending to be a Sundere anime girl. Um, not that I care about this duel or anything. Meanwhile, Zane and Alexis reenact their favorite Little Britain sketch. Quite impressive. He switched his strategy and is still playing well. Yeah, but... Bastion plays Posh of Greed, which allows him to draw two monocles and wear them both on his face at the same time. Some people would be like, Hey, Bastion, why don't you just wear glasses? And he would say, Mmm... F*** off. <laughs> Bastion is posh. Bastion says that Jaden is now in massive trouble, as there are now ten cards stacked on top of Carbonedon in his graveyard. And to demonstrate that, we get this amazing visual of these giant f***ing cards just landing on top of Carbon Edon's head. Check it out. But he can handle the pressure. Mmm, I'm making it rain. Literally, in a scientific manner. Because I've combined my hydro get on with my oxy get on, which creates water, making it rain. Mmm, posh style. Meanwhile, Carbon Edon's like, stop f***ing dropping cards on my head, you d Bastion explains that the overwhelming gravitational force that comes from having... 10 trading cards on top of your head converts Carbonedon into Diamond. And by removing this card from play, Bastion is then able to summon his Diamond Dragon, Hyozan Ryu. And both Bastion's Diamond and Water Dragons combine forces to take out elemental hero Michael Buble. Jaden's life points drop down to 1800, and he activates the trap card Hero Signal, which he then uses to summon the unfortunately buttockless Elemental Hero Clayman. Although I suppose Elemental Hero Clayman could have the best butt of all the Elemental Heroes, because you could literally fashion it into whatever shape or size. You know what? I'm gonna stop hyper-focusing on the butts. At least, you know, a little bit less. Bastion ends his turn, and we find that Gerard is surprisingly invested in this duel. This is really getting good. I forgot how much fun dueling could be. Children are f missing! Is that not a little bit more of a priority, Gerard? Typical completionist behavior. He's gotta finish what he starts. Jaden does a bunch of card game nonsense in order to summon elemental hero Blade Edge. Bledge to his friends. From the crowd, Cyrus points out to Chumley that Blade Edge's attack is only 2,600. Not enough to take down Water Dragon's defense. And of course, Jaden uses his already established preternatural hearing abilities to listen in on what Cyrus said and correct him. That's not enough to beat that water dragon? It is. When I use this, the field spell Skyscraper! You know, it's called Skyscraper, but there's clearly like dozens of skyscrapers there. It's more like just a city. I guess the temptation for ridicule would just be too great if it was just called City. All right, Kaiba, I activate my city card. Your shitty card. No, my city. Your shitty card. City card. Your shitty card. It's not shitty. Then why do you keep calling it that? Fine, Skyscraper. Scraper? What's wrong with you? Gerard sees the enormous holographic
holographic city rising out of the ground like something out of a low-budget Evangelion experience, and he starts having flashbacks to his own dueling career. Jaden, of course, explains that Skyscraper's effect allows an elemental hero to gain a thousand attack when it attacks a monster with a higher attack than it, and Blade Edge destroys Bastion's Water Dragon. As always, Bledge's special effect means that the difference between his monster's attack and his opponent's defense is dealt to Bastion as damage. And Bastion's down to 500 life points. Ooh, the pain. Bastion explains that when Water Dragon is destroyed, he can then summon a Hydrogedon and two Oxygedons from his graveyard. Meanwhile, Carbonedon's in that graveyard being like, thank God. Three dragons off my face. Bastion also activates his last magnet card. Fucking last magnet. How does that card work? This activates whenever one of my monsters is destroyed. Then it equips onto the monster that was responsible for the destruction and causes it to lose 800 attack points. Oh, that's how it works. Thanks. Elemental hero Clayman attacks Oxygedon, and the entire crowd is like. You'd think it was because they were impressed, but it's actually because the cafeteria doesn't give out free water. So when Water Dragon exploded, everybody opened their mouths hoping to get some sort of liquid sustenance. Chumley declares this duel to be very licious. Add it to the list. Gerard is still very stunned by the events of this duel, and he flashes back to when he was a young duelist and was looking at skyscrapers. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to learn more about Gerard and his deep and complex backstory that involves Skyscraper. We're not gonna learn it, are we? Bastion activates... something. From my hand, I activate the spell Litmus Doom Ritual. Bastion uses this card in order to summon Litmus Doom Swordsman, who looks like what your friend does in Final Fantasy XIV after they spent the last five years grinding for absurd gear. Meanwhile, I'm running around as a half-naked cat guy. Bastion explains that Litmus Doom Swordsman is immune to traps and cannot be destroyed in battle. And when there is a trap on the field, Litmus Doom Swordsman attack and defense becomes 3,000. And then we get this crazy-ass drumbeat that plays while Blade Edge transfers its attack and defense power over to Litmus Doom Swordsman. It sounds like someone's gonna start surfing any minute. <laughs> Wipe out. Both of Bastion's monsters destroy both of Jaden's. Bastion then activates his spell card, A Wing Beat of Giant Dragon, which is not the title of a foreign knockoff version of How to Train Your Dragon that your mum found at the car boot sale. No, it's actually a card that allows Bastion to destroy all spell and trap cards on the field if he sacrifices one level five or higher dragon. Of course, this also causes Jaden's skyscraper card to disappear, taking away his significant advantage. Jaden is now looking at the floor, presumably because he's getting ready to get on his hands and knees, as is tradition when losing a card game. But then then he says, I don't think I've ever had a more fun duel. One of those duels was against a talking monkey, and you're saying this is more fun? F off. And in some sort of final desperate move, Jaden summons a brand new elemental hero, Elemental Hero Wildheart. And he's a big, meaty, muscly man in a diaper. Show us your bomb! Upon seeing this new elemental hero, Bastion has the exact same reaction as I did when I first saw Team Four Stars Dragon Ball Z abridged. New one. Well, he won't make much of an impression. Bastion cockily explains, like an actual c that as long as he has a monster on the field, Spirit Barrier will reduce any battle damage he takes to zilch. But Jaden doesn't care about any of Bastion's posh pontifications, as he's too busy equipping Wildheart with Cyclone Boomerang, which is not a shitty dangerous ride at the carnival, but is actually a weapon that increases Wildheart's attack to 2,000. So of course Wildheart throws the boomerang directly at the ground, like you do with a boomerang, and it starts spinning so hard that it starts eating through the floor as it charges toward Litmus Doom Swordsman. Again, much like how you would use a typical boomerang. And of course, the boomerang returns to Wildheart, smacking him dead in the face and destroying him in his first amazing appearance. <laughs> Jaden's life points drop to 300 and he says, Perfect! Man, Zane, you're right, what a pro. Jaden helpfully explains that when Cyclone Boomerang and the monster it's equipped with are destroyed, he can destroy all trap and spell cards on the field, causing 500 damage to Bastion's life points 
at each one. This causes Spirit Barrier to shatter open, sending thousands upon thousands of glass shards cascading down onto Bastion's posh face, shredding it until it's unrecognizable. Yay! Nah, he's fine, because as we know, holograms do not hurt people, unless they do. Bastion's posh points fall to zero, and the entire invisible crowd cheers. Zane is very disappointed with Bastion's performance. I guess when it came to Jade and Yuki, Bastion miscalculated. I guess, or maybe some strategies you just can't solve. <laughs> ah yes, much like the airtight strategy of giving his monster a boomerang so that it can destroy itself with it. Oh, is Bastion winning, is he? I bet have a half-naked, muscly man-man hit himself in the face with a boomerang. You cannot solve that strategy. Alexis is right. Gerard, having watched the entire duel play out, is celebrating for Jaden. And then Alexis sees this and she chases after him. I too would want to chase after someone and beat him up if I saw him cheering for Jaden. Bastion approaches Jaden and tries to shake his hand, but Jaden turns it into some sort of shitty high five, which curses Bastion to walk the earth knowing forever that he once high-fived Jaden Yuki. Truly the greatest defeat that a human being can experience. So a very satisfying loss for Bastion on a deeply personal level. Alexis finally catches up to Gerard in the halls of Duel Academy and breathlessly, emotionally demands to know what his deal is. Hey you, you're the guy that was asking me questions at the abandoned dorm. What are you doing here? Or she just sort of casually speaks to him like they're having a bit of a natter. Okay. Gerard explains that he came to Duel Academy looking for the scoop of a lifetime, but what he found was something far greater. You see, I came here looking for a story, but what I found was something very, very different. I found the duelist inside me. The duelist, I thought, was long gone. Okay, but what about the missing children, Gerard? Are they not a pressing concern? It's true. I was... A duelist, like Jaden and Bastion, but I wasn't any good. Oh, so exactly like Jaden. I had a great lead that I was gonna sell. One that would have probably ruined Duel Academy. But I don't want to ruin this place. Not now. Oh, okay, so a bunch of students at this school are missing, probably abducted by unseen forces, who knows, uh, and you're sitting on a bunch of evidence that points to the school as being culpable in this, and will blow the roof off of it and explain to everybody that Duel Academy is a dangerous place to send their kids to learn anything because they might go missing due to nonsense. But you saw a card game and you liked it, so let's just pretend that never happened. Yeah, let's, just, let's move on. Water under the bridge, right? Gerard makes a meaningful promise to Alexis. Now I only want to help to find them, all the missing students. Including your brother, Alexis. And he promptly f**ks off and never comes back to Duel Academy ever again. He never even mentioned or acknowledged, really. Also, also, if you want to help find these kids, Gerard, wouldn't telling people about what you discovered be the way to do that? Like, what the f**k? I'm gonna go help find your brother by doing absolutely nothing. Jaden celebrates yet another successful duel by standing next to his best friends. And then Bastion celebrates his experience by standing next to his own best friends. Get it? There's no one there. Jaden ends the episode by exclaiming, School duel, get your game on, cause here I come! Jaden, the school duel is a game. It can't get itself on, you big t and that's the end of the episode. So yeah, Jaden is now officially going to be representing Duel Academy in the school duel. I don't know if that is significant. I don't know if it even means anything in the grand scheme of things. All I know is that I wouldn't have Jaden Yuki representing me on like a game of hopscotch. Not only has this school been responsible for several students going missing and covering it up apparently, but they have Jaden Yuki as their representative. Could they f anything up worse? I don't believe they could. I gotta admit, that was a pretty fun duel with some uh, pretty unorthodox things happening. Uh, the dude throwing him a boomerang in his face was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, and that was the winning move as well, which is phenomenal because uh, it, it means the Bastion was defeated by the most illogical decision ever. And that feels very appropriate for taking out Bastion, the equation-based menace. But what did you think? Did you like that duel? Did you think Jaden should represent Duel Academy at the school duel? I hope 
the, the, the Tool Academy tries to pin all the blame on the missing students on Jaden. They'll be like, look, he's representing us. So really, shouldn't he take the fall for the crime? I like that new elemental hero, Wildheart, is big manly man. It's interesting though, because all the others are like superhero based sort of things. And then he's just like, I'm naked and I'm going to beat you up. Or hit myself in the face with a boomerang. That's apparently what I'm going to do. Please let me know what you thought of this episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX in those comments. So yeah, that's me uh, basically done. Uh, I want to sign off by saying, first of all, thank you for watching and thank you for waiting. Obviously, uh, I know if you're a fan of mine, then you're probably used to all these weird sort of hiatuses and I, I wish I had more control over it. A lot of it is down to the fact that most of what I do is sort of a one-man show sort of thing. But uh, these last three months, really rough, real bad. Uh, but better now. Uh... If you want to support me more than just watching the videos, we do have a Patreon at patreon.com slash littlekaribo. We're in the process of updating it. I just filmed an update video for it, so hopefully you'll see that in the near future. And uh, you can also go to sharkrobot.com slash littlekaribo, uh, where you can find a bunch of our merchandise, t-shirts, etc., that you can buy and the money goes to us. Uh, there's also... Uh, I'm going to be streaming more. I'm going to be streaming from twitch.com slash littlekaribo versus littlekaribo vs and I'm going to be streaming there hopefully a lot more frequently I find st uh, streaming very intimidating I find doing this very intimidating so uh, yeah I, I still have to uh, sit down and do it because it's what I do and uh, I I hope to see you there and that's that's also a good way of supporting us because you know, streaming. And as always, I have to give a whopping Wild Hearts boomerang sized shout out to them Patreon pledges, them beautiful bastards themselves, who all of them have a butt at least as nice as Elemental Hero Avion, I have to say. Y'all look great. Y'all are great down there. Thanks for, thanks for showing up and thanks for supporting us. We really do appreciate it. You guys keep us going in so many different ways. You have no idea. Until next time, here's hoping I don't go missing and Gerard doesn't completely neglect to inform people that I was abducted. I'll catch you later. All I care about is Megadesk. That is all I care about. Getting more Megadesk.